Hey guys, Merrick here with Phantom. So I've been working on something uh, you could call an operating system for augmented reality for quite a while. Not operating system in a traditional way, that would be silly, I'm not making Windows or Android, it's kind of different. You'll see. It's been a crazy ride, crazy journey, I learned so much. And I just got to a point where I'd like to show you what I've built, what I've got, and what I learned. Hopefully uh, it'll make you as excited about this whole thing as, uh, as I am and you'll tell me what you think. Uh, I've been in tech pretty much my whole life and I've been always focusing on human-computer interaction, how we do stuff with computers, how we interact with technology. A couple of years ago, I designed this uh, wearable, experimental, sometimes flammable uh, piece of hardware to interact with augmented reality, only to realize a bit later that there's not really much to interact with yet. Sadly. Now the industry may seem to have progressed a little bit since then, but frankly not so much in the direction I'd like to see. Uh, you see, I'm not after gimmicks, I'm not so interested in putting funny heads on people. Uh, I'm after practical AR that can enhance us as humans, that can connect us with machines that are vastly more capable than whatever you can hold or keep in your pocket. So I kept on digging and experimenting and learning. And at some point I even ran a Kickstarter campaign that was an immediate failure and we'll never talk about it again. But since then I actually managed to build piece by piece what I was talking about back then. Uh, now it's a little bit different because I know better now, but I'm actually very happy with how it turned out. And I hope you'll like it too. So let's dive into it. I'll show you what Phantom is and what you'll be able to do with it yourself very soon because it's coming out with SDKs and completely open sourced, but more about it later. Everything you'll see is designed for immersive, head-worn, augmented reality. The device I'm currently using most is iPhone 8 Plus and a slightly upgraded Google Daydream that comes with a handy controller. The display is not ideal, of course, but the real state-of-the-art AR hardware still in fact offers only about a half the field of view, which is essential for your contextual awareness, for three times the price. So I think this may be actually a good start until we build something really useful or fun to do in AR and that creates demand for better and cheaper AR hardware. I actually spent a lot of time making sure you get a reasonably comfortable stereo illusion from a mono camera feed of your regular off-the-shelf phone. There's some math and black magic involved and it seems to be working just fine for most test subjects. So normally uh, you'd see the world like this, but I'd like to shoot a clear demo here. So for that and only that reason, I'm wearing this funky rig. I hope you appreciate. I'm controlling everything with this Google Daydream clicker that comes with a nice touchpad, a few physical buttons and an IMU sensor. On your device, there's a Phantom client running that's written in Unity. Use this AR kit or AR core to track its relative motion and renders the 3D scene. And on top of that creates user interface designed just for this kind of interaction. You may call it Spatial Window Manager if you want. The client also runs your AR apps and manages world objects that your app wants to present to users. The human then interacts with these objects using tools and interaction model designed to be precise, fast and reliable. All right, that's fun, but we've all seen things in AR before and done the demos and you never do them again, right? So what's actually different this time? What's going on here? Think of the client as of a browser. It handles rendering and interacts with the human, but it's also permanently connected to the Phantom Cloud running on Amazon Web Services. The device continuously streams users' position and activity, but also in real-time uploads point cloud detected by the visual odometry engine, such as ARKit or AR Core. The cloud then crunches it all in real time and provides the client immediately with some useful intel about the world around them. For instance, geometry detected incrementally from point cloud vertices, which we then use for physics and occlusion, but also character navigation. The cloud also provides each client with real-time position and synchronized states of all other clients and objects inside, enabling multi-user sessions. The Phantom Cloud itself consists of currently 10 interlinked workers running on Node.js and performing various specialized jobs. For instance, there's one to localize and relocalize devices. Another one receives and routes real-time updates from users. One worker processes point clouds and pre-calculates surface normals, which another worker then uses to detect area geometry, and so on. Clients even upload downsampled still camera frames every three seconds or so. And these are then run through Google Vision API, or anything similar, to be analyzed by a neural network. The resulting combination of data is a map of the physical world that keeps on growing, updating and correcting itself, and provides you with all you need to understand and design for the actual context around your user. 
This cloud approach allows us to even read text with only a tiny and manageable delay or recognize people, places and everyday items. And we can of course run much more thorough analysis of the collected data here than we could ever afford on users' limited mobile hardware. So that's all pretty neat and stuff and well done you. You may be thinking, but how do I get to use it? How do I get to access all the data and work with it? Well, great question, my dear viewer. If you've done any AR before, here's where we go even more nuts. The cloud has an API to talk to third-party apps, your apps, running on your own infrastructure or even a laptop. Your app is then written in JavaScript, or even better, TypeScript, runs on Node.js and receives all the data I just showed you via a series of real-time network interfaces. This way, your app becomes a puppeteer, telling Phantom what to instantiate where, what state to put it in, or where and how it should move, and you'll have all the information necessary to make such decisions. As a developer, all you need to worry about is the design and scripting of your world objects in Unity and implementation of the actual application logic in Node.js. There's even networked physics and synced animations built in so that you can really focus on what's important. But you're also free to enhance the user interface with your own interactive creations by simply attaching them to tracked surfaces. Of course, many apps can connect to one Phantom node at the same time and the client can run multiple apps too. Again, all subjects for more upcoming detailed videos. So, where am I with all this, you may be asking? Quite far, in fact. All you just saw is live, real, runs on AWS and is quite stable at the moment. I'm about to launch a private alpha that will only run on iOS, sorry, uh, and will come with a few silly demos you can try out. At this point, I'm quite busy finishing up some tweaks and cleaning up my code and documenting everything properly so I can release it. And since everything's pretty new and there's really nowhere to copy from, you know, certain things, I had to improvise and sort of experiment a lot. The first alpha uh, will be about interactions and the whole input system and controls. So I'd definitely like to hear your comments on that while you get to try it. There's gonna be another alpha coming after that. And this one will come with full documentation and source codes so that you can actually build stuff yourself. Now both these alpha releases will be invite only as I need to manage the number of people on my servers. So please follow the link below in the description. Tell me a little bit about yourself. If you have any cool ideas about what this should do and what it should be, please express yourselves. I mean, I'm quite interested in what you'd like to build. So if you have any ideas for or an apps that you'd like to develop. Don't be afraid to tell me what you're thinking. Uh, I'm not gonna steal your ideas. In fact, my particular areas of interest when it comes to putting this whole thing to use revolve around civic engineering, architecture, manufacturing, construction, robotics, uh, but also games. So if you're thinking something like this, if it sparkled an inspiration, uh, we may even join forces and, and work on something together. Now, besides open sourcing all this, uh, I'm going to be working on my own commercial applications that sort of require this kind of infrastructure. And they will revolve around the topics I just mentioned. Uh, I just needed a platform for this kind of stuff. It wasn't there, so I built it and you can use it and maybe contribute. Now, I also made some useful tools down the road developing all this. So I'm going to be releasing that as well. It's stuff like uh, the TypeScript wrapper for the Point Clouds library, PCL from pointclouds.org, uh, so that you can analyze point clouds in Node.js even further, should you wish to. But the idea is that you're going to be even able to host your own Phantom node uh, with all the workers, you know, the whole thing, and do whatever you want with it. Like you can host WordPress, for instance. So same kind of philosophy. Allow me to finish with a little bit of advertising because I also mean business. Uh, if you're developing or making or selling uh, an AR headset in whatever stage of development or production, I mean hardware, glasses, you should definitely consider running Phantom as your primary operating system because that's what it is and it's pretty damn good in what it's designed to do. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, chances are you liked what you just saw, maybe you understand some of the technical or design aspects that come with all this. If you like what you just saw and you would like to get involved, please look me up and we can talk. Thanks for watching, the alpha coming up, so also this is just the first of the series, so do whatever you want to that subscribe button or whatever. I've gotta go.